Hey folks, I'm Demotro. Uh, welcome back to the Combo Classroom, where we're almost at the end of Grade Negative 2. In fact, on my main Combo Class channel, I've already released sort of the mathematical finale of this grade, which is the longest edited video I've ever created, involving a lot of personal research, so make sure you check that out. And there's only one more full episode remaining, which will be a more documentary-like finale and while I'm filming that over the next few weeks I wanted to create some content on this channel related to some little subtopics that I've encountered over this grade but didn't make it into any main videos themselves and today the one we're gonna be discussing is related to the good old Fibonacci sequence and the Fibonacci sequence as many of you may already know is a series of numbers that begins with zero, then one, or alternately one, then another one will get us to the same place. And each new term is the sum of the previous two from that point onward. Like zero plus one is one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, those add to five, then eight, 13, and etc. And although I have made a whole episode about the Fibonacci sequence, which I'll link in the description, this bonus video is almost more of a follow-up to a different episode I made this grade. Don't worry if you have or haven't seen those. Related to what I call numberations. And there was an interesting connection between those in Fibonacci numbers as well. And to lead to that, I want to first use an alternate way of defining or finding the Fibonacci sequence, almost sort of like in nature, although we'll be using an idealized mathematical version of a natural scenario. And this question or circumstance was originally posed by the mathematician Leonardo of Pisa, known as Fibonacci himself, way back in the day. And the question or circumstance he posed was, Imagine you have a fictionalized version of rabbits, and we're going to look at their population growth. And this couldn't occur in the real world in this way because these rabbits never die once they're born. They come in exact pairs, and those pairs have very specific rules for when they will lay new babies. And we will also ignore any possible weird implications about these mating rules. And the circumstance is beginning with one pair of rabbits, which we'll use a star to mean a pair, each generation, which we'll say, how about each month, some new babies, which will be pairs of rabbits, will be born. And if a new pair has just been born, it will take them one month before they mate, and then one more month before they give birth. And every future month after that, they will be giving birth to a new batch of babies, a new single pair. And essentially, we can say that these rabbits live forever, and on the second month and onward after their birth, they will create a new pair. So here on the first month, we just had that original pair we started with. And even on the second month, it's just the same pair. They will have mated at that point, but they won't have their new baby until month three, and they'll still be around. Then on month four, they're still around and they're going to have another new baby. Plus that one's still around and now has mated for the first time, although it has not had its own kid yet. And here is the new one that that original pair has now had. Then on the next month, we have that original pair, which will lay another new one. And we're going to have one more pair that's been around long enough to not only be there, but create another of their own. And then we have this one, which still is not two months past its start, so they don't have a new one yet. 
And if we count how many pairs of rabbits there are at each month, we have one, one, two, three, five, the next will be eight, and etc. It is the Fibonacci sequence. Now, I'm gonna set aside this whiteboard for a minute to use another whiteboard where I'm gonna talk about a connection with these things I call numberations that didn't make it into my main episode I've done about those so far. And then we'll see that really it's sort of this pattern in disguise. Now, what we're gonna look at with these numberations which are my nickname for essentially a function that takes one number and spits out another number. Although typically with these numberations, they can be in the form of an operation and a number as a combination, such as plus three or times two or squared, which is to the power of two. Now, if we have a certain set of numberations, which numbers can we reach by applying those one at a time to a starting number? Let's say starting with the number one. And one of the main patterns that I investigated in my previous episode about this was how if our rules for which numberations were allowed at any point are that we can either double the current number applying a times two, or we can apply a plus one to the number only if the previous thing we had done wasn't a plus one. We cannot do those twice in a row. Well, I noted that if we have that option from one, plus one and times two lead us to the same point, which is the number two, then we could have done a times two followed by a plus one, which would give us three, or we could times two again to four. From here, the three had to be gotten there with a plus one right there, so we can't do another in a row, but we could double it to six, or this one we could add one or double it to eight, and onward from there, our patterns will continue. Six could go to seven or 12. Five could only go to 10. Eight could go to nine or 16. And if we continue this, we will encounter each whole number in exactly one way. None of them will be missing. None of them will show up twice. And the reason for that can be seen if you turn these into their binary representations, because essentially doubling is like adding a zero at the end of a binary numbers representation, and adding one up to once in a row is like if we were ending in a zero in our binary number, turning the last digit to a one, and by applying those rules, we could sort of craft any string of zeros and ones we wanted that corresponded with the binary representations of the whole numbers. And those similarly have exactly one binary representation per whole number and no doubles. There's not two different binary representations that represent the number three, for example, unless you count equivalents to how point infinite nines equals one in our base. There are double representations within bases if you go down to infinite decimals. But let's imagine we're just looking at whole number representations now. So with this pattern, the thing that I didn't note in that episode that was a fun connection I saw was how many different numbers have we encountered after a given amount of steps? And at first you might expect it could relate to powers of two, because binary is very related to powers of two. But if I look at everything up to a certain power of two, like up through eight, I may have some numbers missing that didn't come until a little later. So it's not quite related to powers of two on how many have occurred on each level. What it's related to, if we count, is there's one, one, two, three, five, and there will be eight at the next one and then 13 and etc. because this is like this Fibonacci thing in disguise. 
Now, that was a fun place where the Fibonacci sequence seemed to randomly pop up in my own investigations until I recalled this approach of generating the Fibonacci numbers and noted that it looks very similar what's going on. If I had drawn the arrows of these in a certain way, it would be the same type of tree structure. And so leave a comment if you can think of some different ways we could phrase this connection between the old Fibonacci allegory or analogy about rabbits and the time it showed up in my numberations being similar to bases research. In any case, that's enough for today's little bonus video. I will link in the description the episodes I've made related to these things, my numberations one and my Fibonacci sequence one, as well as that latest super long cool episode that I hope you all see on there. And like I mentioned, while I am working on the finale documentary of Grade Negative 2, there will be a lot of random bonus videos showing up on this channel on different topics that didn't manage to fit into other portions of the grade yet. And as usual, I will also live stream at random points on this channel, and I hope to catch some of you during those as well. Overall, I love you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.